In, if you look in many textbooks, studies about uh, emancipation or the end of slavery often present these, these, these developments as if the enslaved had nothing to do with it. So if you look at the, in the United States, they would say Lincoln freed the slaves or the, you know, the northern whites freed the slaves. If you look in the, in the British world, you will hear that British, the British outlawed slavery. If you look in the Dutch world, you'll see a similar thing. However, what's not mentioned was that in the United States there were constant slave revolts. It was very difficult to get fire insurance on plantations. There were blacks who fought in the Civil War. In fact, there were, there, in the French world, after the war, there, there, were, there were monuments, including the Statue of Liberty, to commemorate the role of black soldiers in the effort to, to, to end slavery. If you look in the British world, the outcry to end slavery followed the sharp rebellion in the island of Jamaica. It was a very bloody rebellion in which, in which the, 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 the larger scale of carnage in it was actually on the part of the white planters. If you look in the Dutch-speaking world, where the Tula-led rebellion, it was a very similar thing. The, it started at, with the, the enslaved fighting, but the most bloody response to it was by the white planters. And this was such an out, moral outrage and embarrassment for Dutch society, similar with the Sharp Rebellion for British society, that it led to the outlawing of slavery. So one of the misconceptions is that violence does not actually have an impact. However, the way Fanon is using the question of violence is more radical than that conception. And this more radical conception that Fanon is using is linked to the understanding of what is involved in, in, in understanding the very construction of certain people as problem people. Now, what do I mean? Well, one of the things that's often observed by many, many blacks, for instance, many black males in particular, is that many black males are often accused of being violent in contexts in which they're actually even trying to be polite. But the contexts in which they're trying to be polite are often contexts in which their, their presence is considered illicit. In other words, they should not be there. So if one is asserting oneself in a place that, within the social milieu, one is illegitimately there, then that assertion, of course, is going to, be, is going to have the appearance of violence. This means then, in effect, the only way one can effectively demonstrate that one is nonviolent is by not being there. This, of course, brings out a more radical problem around the, the means ends conception of dealing with violent issues and social struggles. And this comes through in something very, very key that's connected to Fanon and Gandhi and next to Fanon and the aesthetics of violence in terms of tragedy. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, in terms of Fanon and Gandhi, Gandhi's often posed against Fanon as a, as, as a, as a proponent of nonviolence. But what's not understood about Gandhi was v Gandhi was, l just like Fanon, always a proponent of being assertive. Gandhi rejected the idea that one does nothing about one's oppression. He considered that cowardice. Gandhi argued that it would be better to fight. But Gandhi's argument next was, if one is going to fight, it's better to fight with a commitment to the humanity, not only of oneself, but also of the people one is fighting. Now, already, that portrait of Gandhi shows a relationship between Gandhi and Fanon, which would shock many of the critics and many people who have heard of that Fanon is somehow this demonic harbinger of violence. It turns out that actually Fanon detested violence. But what Fanon understood was that the colonial circumstance was such that the very idea of decolonization in a world in which colonialism was considered legitimate was in itself violent. This meant, this, and this is where the tragic part comes in, that Fanon saw violence in a way that was suitable to the way someone such as Hegel, Schopenhauer to some degree, Nietzsche, and Freud to some extent understood tragedy. Now, the Hegelian conception of tragedy, in, 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 in a short version, is about two conflicts of right. Okay? If it's two conflicts of right, it means if someone prevails, someone will lose, but not just lose, but lose something that that other understands as right. If you look under every colonial situation, settlers never consider themselves as wrong as being settlers. 
They see themselves as absolutely legitimately with a right to the land. If you look at the people who have been dispossessed of the land, they don't see themselves as legitimately dispossessed. They see themselves as legitimately 100% having the right to the land. So you have the stage set for two conflicts of right. If the, the one group loses, the other group wins, but wins in the eyes of the other as a form of loss. In other words, the tragedy in both instances is that whichever side prevails, there is violation. It is this now that brings back some of the earlier points that Fanon raised in Black Skin, White Mask. Because in Black Skin, White Mask, remember that self-other dialectic, if one wants to enter into the category of the self-other relationship, one is bringing oneself into the ethical. But from those in the ethical, if that other group is outside of the ethical, then the ethical is in effect being invaded. This means then that they will always appear, the, the, the very notion that they must decolonize the ethical realm will always appear as violent. And this is why Fanon, as a description, not a prescription, but as a description, is saying it is futile to try to demonstrate if one is trying to decolonize an environment that one is nonviolent, precisely because the only thing that those who see themselves in rightful possession of the status quo will accept is non-decolonization as the condition of nonviolence.